Hello all, thanks so much again for tuning into my channel. Today we're going to go over the picks for the top 25 matchups for week 11 for the 2021-2022 college football season. Before we get to those picks though, please be sure to like this video, share it with anyone else you think would enjoy it, also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so that you'll be alerted to when new videos drop here on my channel. Without further ado, let's jump into this, shall we? Last week, for week 10, I went 18-5 and five overall with my picks, so a nice week. That brings my overall record to 150 correct picks versus 48 incorrect picks, so I have now picked correct games three times as much as I've picked incorrectly. I went 1-0 in the top 25 matchups last week, bringing that record to 25, or to, excuse me, 19-7 overall. There were no top 10 matchups last week, so I remain 6-0 with those. So I'm doing very well in the season. Let's keep the momentum going. Let's keep the ball rolling with week 11. We've got the number one team in the nation. Again, we're using the college football playoff committee rankings now. This is the second week that they've released their rankings. The Georgia Bulldogs coming off a 43-6 drubbing of Missouri. They are at Tennessee. Tennessee is an improved team this year, but they are not the Georgia Bulldogs. They will not be able to withstand that defense. Go with Georgia. Number two, the Alabama Crimson Tide are home against New Mexico State University. Go with Bama. Number three, the Oregon Ducks. They are home against Washington State University, the Cougars. I'm going to go with Oregon. Washington State isn't that good this year. I believe their head coach and a bunch of their assistants uh, all were fired because they refused to get vaccinated, and the rules in the state of Washington were that public employees, which coaches are public employees, had to get vaccinated. So their season is not going well, so go with the Ducks. Number four, the Ohio State Buckeyes coming off a surprisingly close game against Nebraska. They only won that game... 26 to 17. So Nebraska hung in there tough. Those Ohio State Buckeyes are home against the number 19 Purdue Boilermakers coming off their surprise win over my Michigan State Spartans. Womp, womp, womp. Purdue is not going to make it three upsets this season. They are not going to make it two upsets in a row. I think they'll play Ohio State tough for a while, but I think Ohio State pulls away at the end. Go with the Buckeyes. Number five, the Cincinnati Bearcats, who keep winning despite the obvious signs that the college football playoff committee, save something disastrous happening in the top four teams, will not let a group of five team, even one as good as Cincinnati, into the college football playoff. They are on the road at South Florida. South Florida is no good. However, Cincinnati has been struggling the last couple of weeks against inferior teams, like a 28-20 win over Tulsa, who was under 500, a 7-point win against Navy, who was under 500. They are not looking impressive, certainly not enough to sway the college football playoff committee, but they still keep winning. They're 9-0, they're ranked number 5, they're going to go to 10-0, go with Cincinnati. Number six, the Michigan Wolverines got back into form with a 27 or 29 to 7 win over Indiana, where they got back to running the ball. One of their running backs, Corum, though, has an injury, some sort of, I think, lower leg injury that might keep him out of the game this week at Penn State. It's a Big Ten East matchup. It's a noon start, so it's not a night game. I don't know if Penn State's going to do a whiteout because they did one earlier this season when they faced Auburn. My guess would be not. That's kind of a special thing that they do. Penn State is a tough out. Despite the fact that they lost that nine overtime game to Illinois, I'm willing to forgive that and think that that's a fluke. It was basically monsoon conditions during that game. There were new overtime rules that went into effect where they had to go for two after the second overtime. That's an odd scenario to be in. They play tough against Ohio State. I would imagine that they would play tough against Michigan, but that Michigan over the course of the game will rely on the running game, will limit the amount of opportunities that Sean Clifford has to lead the Penn State offense down the field, and that they will slowly but surely pull away from the Nittany Lions, so I'm going to go with Michigan in that game. 
Number seven, the aforementioned Michigan State Spartans, only dropping to number seven in the rankings, which the Spartan fan in me says, yes, yes, still top ten. But the larger college football fan in me goes, really? They lost to an unranked Purdue team and did not look good doing it, letting up 536 passing yards, 217 of which went to David Bell, Purdue's top wide receiver. They, ba- they made very little attempt to even run the ball. And Michigan State had to have known that. And yet they still let them throw the ball all over the field on them. And they're still ranked number seven in the polls. They are home this week against Maryland. Michigan State has to be very careful here. Michigan exposed how weak their secondary really is, and Purdue took advantage of that weakness. Maryland, with their quarterback, Talia Tugavailoa, they can put up points and they can throw the ball around. They've done so a couple of times earlier this season. Next week, Michigan State is playing Ohio State on the road. And then the final week of the regular season, they're playing Penn State at home. If they overlook Maryland because they're looking forward to Ohio State, if they don't take fixing their secondary seriously and they slip up a couple of times, they could risk losing a second straight game to Maryland and risk potentially losing four straight games if things against Ohio State and Penn State don't go their way to end the season after starting 8-0. and They need to get this game. And I think they're going to be feeling some pressure to do just that. I really hope that they're not looking over Maryland towards Ohio State the next week. I'm going to go with Michigan State because I think their offense will be diverse enough. And I hope, I hope that Coach Mel Tucker finally decides, let's give the Terrapins all of Kenneth Walker the third they can handle and then some to the tune of like 35 carries and just let him control the clock and limit Maryland's offensive opportunities. I'm going to go with Michigan State on this one. I'm not as nervous as I was about the Purdue game, but I still think this could potentially bite them in the rear end if they're looking ahead too much to next week's massive showdown against the Buckeyes. Number eight, the Oklahoma Sooners coming off an absolute takedown of Texas Tech. And then a bye week, they are at number 13, Baylor, in a Big 12 power matchup. Baylor's a solid team. They've pulled a couple of upsets. They've won a couple of big games this season. However, despite the struggles that Oklahoma had against Kansas three weeks ago, the Texas Tech game, they looked incredible. Caleb Williams was setting records for the number of passing touchdowns for an Oklahoma freshman, the number of passing yards for an Oklahoma freshman. They've had a week to prepare for Baylor. I'm going to go with Oklahoma on this one because they've had an extra week to rest. They've had an extra week to scheme. They've had an extra week for Lincoln Riley, Oklahoma's head coach, to devise some sort of offensive system that can get through Baylor. Baylor plays good defense, but I think Oklahoma's going to get this one. Go with the Sooners. Number nine, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish coming off a 34-6 beatdown of Navy. They are at Virginia. Virginia isn't very good. They can throw the ball around sometimes, but sometimes they just can't do anything. Notre Dame, I think, is a strong team in all facets of the game. I'm going to go with the Fighting Irish on this one. Number 10, Oklahoma State coming off a 24-3 victory against West Virginia on the road. Return home to the Gary Patterson-less TCU Horned Frogs, who pulled an upset last week that I didn't think they were going to win. They did end up winning that game, although they're playing against a strong Oklahoma State team. This Oklahoma State team is solid. They're good offensively. They're good defensively. They're good on special teams. I don't think TCU is going to make it two in a row. Go with Okie State and the Cowboys for this one. Number 11, Texas A&M. They are at number 15, Ole Miss, this weekend. I'm going to go with Ole Miss in this game. I was happy to see Texas A&M beat Auburn last week because I don't think Auburn is as good as the college football playoff committee seems to think that they are, and it showed last week when they got smothered by Texas A&M's defense. Ole Miss has a better offense than Auburn does, though. I think they have a better quarterback than Auburn. They can put up points, as they've shown numerous times this season. I think the game is going to be tight early, but I think 
the offensive firepower that Ole Miss can bring to bear is going to be a bit too much. I think they get this one at home, go with Ole Miss for an upset. Number 12, Wake Forest coming off their first loss of the season, a 58-55 defensive showdown against North Carolina Tar Heels. They are home against number 16, North Carolina State. The Wolfpack comes in at 7-2 after beating Liberty 27-14 last week. I think Wake Forest gets back on track this week. They let up 24 or th- I think it's like 24 or 30 points in the fourth quarter to North Carolina last week. I think they fix that this week. I think their defense rebounds. I don't believe that North Carolina State has the offensive weaponry that North Carolina has. I don't think their quarterback is as good as Sam Howell for UNC. I think Wake Forest gets back on track. Go with the Demon Deacons to move to 9 and 1. Number 13, Baylor. As I have previously mentioned, they are going to lose to number 8, Oklahoma. Number 14, BYU. They have a bye week this week. So we'll move on to number 15, Ole Miss. I've already said that they are going to beat number 11, Texas A&M. Number 16, North Carolina State. As I just mentioned, I believe that they are going to go down to the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. So we'll skip all the way down to number 17, the aforementioned Auburn Tigers at 6-3. They are home against Mississippi State. I still don't know what I get from Mississippi State. They seem very inconsistent. Auburn has a good defense. I think that's going to get them the win here. Go with the Auburn Tigers. Number 18, the Wisconsin Badgers. Starting out the season really horribly, now climbing back up to 6-3 and three on the year. They are home against Northwestern. Northwestern is no good. Go with Bucky Badger for that one. The number 19 Purdue Boilermakers. They are on the road at Ohio State. I've already said that Ohio State is going to win that game. So we will move on to number 20, the Iowa Hawkeyes sitting at 7-2. and two. Coming off a 17-12 to 12 offensive juggernaut showdown against Northwestern last week. They are home against Minnesota. Minnesota is inconsistent. They have phenomenal games like when they blanked Colorado 30 to nothing, but then they have other really confusing games like when they lose to Bowling Green. Minnesota lost their game last week. I don't know what I'm going to get from Minnesota. I know what I'm going to get from Iowa. I'm going to get a garbage offense and a very good defense, but a defense that needs to turn the ball over. Not just hold opponents to three and outs. That seems to have become the one Achilles heel for the Iowa Hawkeyes is that despite how top flight their defense is, if they're not turning the ball over and giving their offense short fields or scoring points on their own on defense, they still struggle because their offense can't do anything with the ball. And that defense eventually gets tired and eventually gets worn out. Minnesota's offense, I don't think, is good enough to overcome what Iowa can bring defensively. So I'm going to go with the Hawkeyes for this one. Number 21, the Pitt Panthers. They played last night. I was not aware that their game was last night. I thought it was tonight. Otherwise, I would have gotten this video in yesterday. But they won that game over North Carolina 30-23. to So I will move on now to number 22, the San Diego State Aztecs. They are coming off a 17-10 to win against Hawaii last week. They are home this week against Nevada. I don't know anything about Nevada. I don't know how good they are. So I'm going to roll with the San Diego State Aztecs to move to 9-1 and one on the year. Number 23, the University of Texas San Antonio Roadrunners are finally getting some love from a college football playoff committee that has clearly shown that they don't give a crap about group of five teams. See, Houston sitting at 8-1, and one, not ranked in either of the first two rankings of the CFP committee. But the Roadrunners are 9-0 and going into this week. They are facing Southern Miss at home. I don't know anything about Southern Miss, but I like my Cinderella stories. I like my underdog teams that don't get respect. UTSA is having a glorious season. I'm going to roll with the Roadrunners. Go with UTSA. Number 24, Utah. They are at Arizona, who is coming off their first win of the season, a 10-3 win against Cal. They are not going to make it 2-0. Go with the Utah Utes in that one. And to round out the top 25, we've got the Arkansas Razorbacks at LSU. 
LSU hung in there against Alabama in a way that I didn't think was they were capable of doing. 20-13. to 13. I thought they were going to get bombed out of the stadium last week by Alabama. But they proved that, especially if I think Alabama had a bit of a bad game in that one, but it's not like that's the only reason why that game was close. LSU played out of their minds, but unfortunately, I think this season for LSU, that game was their Super Bowl. I think they're going to have a profound letdown this week at home. Arkansas can put up points. Arkansas can play well when they're motivated. They're coming in at 6-3. and three. They've already qualified for a bowl game. If they can win a couple more games, they could get into a better quality bowl game, which is, I think, what's on their minds now. I'm going to go with the Arkansas Razorbacks against LSU. And that does it for the top 25 for week 11. Thanks so much for tuning in. Once again, please be sure to like this video. Share it with anyone and everyone you think will enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so that way you will be alerted to when new videos drop on my channel. Thanks so much again for watching and I'll see all of you next week.